Welcome to yet another fabulous TossCast podcast. We have a special treat for you today. We are spanning the globe in this, our first roundtable discussion with the Linux A team. From Australia, I would like to welcome Infinitely Galactic, well known for his meticulous distribution reviews and tutorials. In the United States, our next guest requires no introduction. He is a true inspiration to us all. He is the quintessential Linux newsman. Jordan from This Week in Linux. I would also like to welcome a newcomer to YouTube, Linux Soup with Pingcasts covering Slackware and other distributions on his show. I am Spatry from Cup of Linux. I will be your co-host in today's TossCast podcast. Welcome, one and all. And now I'd like to hand the mic to your show host with the most, Carmine from Total OS Today. Well, Spatry, thank you very, very much. It sounds like you're having a terrific time down there in the South America, Florida, with all of those coffee beans. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yes, well, I must say this this is a real pleasure, real hoot for me to have the real brains of Linux, uh, you know, being a Windows dual booter myself and still learning. But uh, before I begin with the topics of discussion, I just want to say welcome all. And if and if everybody one by one would just like to say hi, and then we will continue. So go ahead. All right. Hey, everybody on the Internet. It's uh, it's IG from Infinitely Galactic. Pleasure to be here once again, and I'm really looking forward to today's discussion. So I shall pass the mic on. This is Jordan from This Week in Linux. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, hope to have a, a great discussion with you guys. Soup with Pincast. Uh, good to be part of the Linux community and looking forward to a good discussion with you guys. All right. Thank you. And, of course, we have Spat as my co-host. All right. Hello. Let's be – Hey. <laughs> All right, let's begin. <laughs> What's up? All right. Um, the show will be uh, basically split into three segments. The first up will be um, Arch Linux. Then we'll go into random topics, and then we will answer a uh, troubleshooting question or a help question that was posted on the Total OS Today website. All right, guys, here we go. I am a Windows dual booter. I will ask questions about Arch Linux. Five simple questions, and we'll start with number one. I am a Windows user dual booter with moderate patience, so why should I even consider using Arch? Uh, Spatry, you're the man right now with Arch, so let me start with you. If you have moderate patience, if you don't wish to read the documentation and um, troubleshoot your own system, Arch probably isn't for you. But the benefits of using Arch is the fact that it is an operating system that is tailored to your needs. Nothing more, nothing less. It is quick, it is fast, it's snappy, and uh, it's a lot of fun to work with. Okay, fair enough. Who wants to take that question next? Okay. One of the things that uh, one of the things that I appreciate about Arch is that uh, when you customize the distribution, you can customize it to the way you like it, or uh, at the same time, you can really gain from the uh, on the performance side that you don't have any extra bloat in there uh, from anything that you don't want to have installed is not going to be installed. You customize everything down to the to the way your hardware works. So if you take enough time to read the documentation and go through the process of customizing it to the way you like it, you're actually going to learn a lot about the way Way Linux works and the way the operating system ticks and how you can make it tick more efficiently if, if as it were. Sounds good. Okay, Twill? Uh, staying in that same vein, I, I have to agree entirely. You customize your system exactly how you want it and you end up learning a lot about the uh, the boot process and the, the configuration files and just uh, a lot of the way of this specific version of Linux works by setting it up. And if you are patient enough and competent enough to read through the documentation, you'll definitely be able to go far with it. Okay. I think we have one last comment to go. All right. Uh, moderate patience, I don't know if that's enough. It's great uh, tinkering with it and learning. And Arch taught me quite a bit uh, about Linux, and that was the first distro I really started learning uh, about Linux with, and that required uh, a decent amount of patience. Uh, you might need more than moderate to get all the... Uh, bits and bobs working. The end result is great, but it requires patience. Thank you. I appreciate your guys' honesty. Um, 
Okay. I guess this uh, is a nice follow-up question. Is there a friendly version of Arch? And when I mean friendly, like, is there a way to install it the way I would install, you know, Zorin or, or, or Linux Mint without any customization or custom partitioning? Is that even possible? Uh, Spatry, what do you say? Yeah. Okay, well, uh, if you've uh, followed my show, I have a few reviews that I have done on different Arch-based distributions that come preloaded with a graphical user interface and uh, have a relatively easier uh, install. But most of them do use uh, a text-based and curses install. There's Bridge Linux, there's Archbang, and then I just did one today on Liquid Lemoore that is now available. Those tend to make it a little bit easier, but you're still going to need to read documentation on it if you're going to uh, if you're going to run an update on it because you know if you don't read the documentation an update can potentially break the system. That's a good point. Okay, um, let's see, Twill. Uh, actually, staying in that same vein, but going uh, to other uh, desktop environments. That's really the biggest difference with the uh, pre-spun ones, as they as you call it, is they take Arch, they build it a certain way, and they put whatever desktop environment on top of it. The one that I actually started out with the first time I used Arch was called Kahel OS, K-A-H-E-L OS, and it's just Arch with uh, GNOME configured on top of it. And I know there's also the Chakra project, but that's not entirely Arch anymore, as far as I understand. Okay. All right. Uh, Ping, you want to go next? Uh, I don't know. I doubt auto-prepare counts. Uh, it'll wipe out everything, set up the partitions. you still got to do the sizes. Uh, my first Arch distro was Arch itself. Thanks to Jordan, I was actually able to get it installed in the VM and then a few days later to the Metal. Okay. Um Question three, I understand that Arch is really bleeding edge, right there on the edge. So, is Arch stable, or can it be made stable? Spat? Well, it seems to be running quite stable for me. However, um, being the video editor that I am, um, I've noticed sometimes uh, I get an update to Melt, or uh, one of the components Uh. that my video editor requires. And having that latest version sometimes would cause a little kink here and there, and I'd have to, uh, I'd have to manually go in and uh, change. Uh, for instance, there was one I use FFmpeg to capture my screen, and I actually had to change the line of my uh, code to get it working properly. Uh, okay. So having the latest and greatest is not always the best thing. Okay, that sounds like a fair answer. By the way, um, Spat, you mentioned that you use the FFmpeg for screencasting. IG uh, has a terrific um, explanation on how to use the experience on, is it igblogspot.com? Do do I have that right? Infinitelygalactic.blogspot.com, yeah. Yeah, I did read it, by the way. If anybody out there listening just want to take a quick look at it, it works great. I have tested it. It is awesome. All right. Well, IG, continuing with the same question, um, how do you see it? No, as far as I can tell, um, Arch has been uh, quite a stable uh, operating system. And I think on the, on the flip side from what um, from what Spatra was talking about, I was having issues with Caden Live uh, in the PPAs on the Ubuntu side of things. I could only use the development PPA uh, to actually get Caden Live uh, working without a without an MLT crash every time it started up. Um, however, with Arch, I got the fix first. Uh, whereas it took uh, about a month for it to trickle down, uh, trickle down into uh, into the Ubuntu uh, PPAs. So on that on that side, issues do get fixed a lot quicker now. It's just simply because it is a rolling release. And um, but you know, obviously you you might be uh, you might come across issues as well quicker than what you are going to be on a on a solid release schedule distribution. So I mean, that's the way I've seen it. As far as actual system stability goes, I haven't had any issues with it. Well, my experience with uh, with Arch actually is that there are a, there have been times where it has been less than stable. Specifically, when they changed from Python 2 to Python 3 as the default, and when they change versions of Pac-Man, there can be some complications. Okay, Ping, do you have anything left to say on that uh, question? Arch has been stable for me whenever I've used it. I have I haven't had really any issues. Uh, I will tweak the system a lot, break it, then fix it, and rinse and repeat. Uh, <laughs> but okay. stable for me, and it, I guess it's just a faster pace uh, for fixes and uh, breakages with the packages since it's rolling release. All right, the final question or questions, I'll just roll into one. Rolling releases 
pros and cons, and really, since Arch is a rolling release, um, what is the future of a, a rolling release? I mean, I, we've, we've talked about the pros and cons before, but what is the future of a rolling release such as Arch Linux? Well, the, the biggest pros and cons, like we said before, is the uh, the ability to not have to immediately reinstall your system every six months, every time there is a major update, and usually not having so many major updates, uh, unless you're switching from one major software release to another, like Python 2 to Python 3, GNOME 2 to GNOME 3, you're not going to have to reinstall or, or have many issues in terms of uh, configuration files. That in and of itself can be really useful to businesses as well because you could have one centralized, this is my image at this date, and then just go from there and build and just run updates instead of having to do full reinstalls and mass re-rollouts of the the operating system. Uh, As far as the future of Arch itself, uh, just keep on rolling and churning from what I understand. Uh, As new software comes out, Arch will just keep on being Arch. Keep it simple. Okay. Ping, you're next. Uh, well, it is great not having to reinstall every six months. Uh, if you're doing hardcore configurations to get your software up and running, then uh, it can be a pain to have to keep redoing and redoing and redoing. Uh, Slackware, uh, I don't know how you guys feel on this. Uh, you can upgrade packages if you're not using Slackware current. Um, you can upgrade package utilities, your Glibc shared libraries. You go into run level one. And you can upgrade it, so that's one way. If you didn't, if you kind of want the stability of a kind of a upgrading, but I guess you wouldn't have uh, wiped out your configurations. But uh, mm-hmm. I'm not sure. I've never personally done that, so I don't know how that works in actuality. But with rolling release, you know, you you don't have to reinstall ever, and right, that, right. that's pretty awesome. So uh, you just you might have to occasionally. Uh, change config files, uh, the configuration might change, you might have to get that working. Pac-Man had the whole key signature thing, you had to get that working. So you might have to intervene a little bit, but uh, some people might consider that a small price to pay for not reinstalling. I kind of like that part as a Windows user, never having to reinstall everything again. That seems very appealing. All right, any final comments on this, IG or, or SPAT? Does require. Oh, I think enough. Yeah, I think enough's been uh, enough's been said on that. I think you know, rolling release certainly has its place. Uh, there will be some people who prefer a, a release schedule uh, as opposed to a rolling release. But yeah, like uh, like Twill said, I think the enterprise does have a lot to gain if uh, if there's uh, a rolling release which can have the the stability there as well as the uh, as well as the rolling nature of it. So. Okay. Spatry. Uh, I, I I agree that. Um, you know, this is a wonderful thing, but, you know, it does require work on your part because when you have a rolling release, sometimes you're going to get an update that may require you to dig into your configuration files, maybe do a little bit of tweaking. You know, uh, you got to read the documentation, stay up to date on it. You know, before I even run an update on my system, I always, I always uh, stick my nose in the Arch Wiki to make sure that if there is a problem with an uh, update, I know how to take corrective action before allowing that update to come into my system. All right. Guys, thank you very much for the quick lesson on Arch. As a Windows dual brooder, it's greatly appreciated. Although I'm not thoroughly convinced I may install it. Not just yet. All right. We talked about random topics. Um, If I may ask everyone on the panel, and then I will give a final answer to this. How do you guys define the word stable when it comes to an operating system? Spatry? Stable is when you have a trouble-free operating system. Uh, pretty much um, a stable operating system, obviously, uh, you're not going to uh, have any breakage or anything like that. It's going to be a rock. It's going to run until you literally have hardware failure without any troubles. Ping? Well, uh, I'd say it's uh, able to get the job done without too much hassle. Nice. Simple enough. Twill? I think both of them hit it on the head there. You're, you know, able to run the software that you need to be able to run, uh, the versions that you need to be able to run of it without having constant crashing, without having to do any sort of real tweaking to keep it running. Uh, being able to update and keep things up to date also makes for a nice stable system. Yeah. Okay. IG? 
I think if you've got a system that does what you want when you want it with uh, with minimum hassle, then I think that's that's uh, that's more than a definition for for stable. Okay. To me, stable is yeah. It means <clears throat> excuse me. It means it means rock solid, uh, trustworthy. Everything works. Now the reason why I bring this up <clears throat> this past weekend, and I had mentioned it before. I had I did, installed and deleted Ubuntu 11.10 twice and it was an issue with the video drivers <clears throat> and uh Spatry knows the uh story he's i think he's laughing in the background you coffee bean you but uh <laughs> but, i saw your show on it you sounded pretty disgusted <laughs> oh you, you know what my i try to be as as a windows dual but i try to be as as um as diplomatic and as neutral as possible but I'm here. So let me just say what I have to say, okay? Yes, install, delete, install, delete it. I went, um, after I installed my Ubuntu system, <clears throat> I went to the additional drivers. Oh, there's an update to my video drivers. And it says, these video drivers have been tested by the, by the Ubuntu developers. Now, to me, that means, like, it's stable, does it not? But looking back, when it says tested, it didn't give a testing score. So maybe tested, maybe it flunked. I don't know. But to me, stable, well, you know, to me, stable is like you guys said. You guys, look, you guys know more about Linux than than I do. To me, it's it's a continual learning curve because I've been so used to Windows. You guys really are the best. Thank you. But to me, (laughs) stable means trustworthy. Everything works. But it didn't turn out that way. Right. You're not, you're not going to like this uh, Total OS today, but, you know, you didn't read the fine print that said that the Ubuntu testers tested it, and it didn't work for them either. Oh, <laughs> uh, geez, so that's what I, I knew I should have gotten new contact lenses. <laughs> but let me finish up, if I may. So stable, okay, stable means rock solid, okay, trustworthy, like you guys said, blah, blah, blah. Or stable can have another meaning. Stable could be a place where horses walk around the farm dumping their tar biz packages. And that's, <laughs> and to be quite honest, that's how I felt. Now, I have some patience, and some Linux is terrific. And to be fair, after we installed Ubuntu the last time, 11.10, even with the ATI graphics cards issues, it's running okay. But I just wish any Linux developers, when they say it's stable, please be up front and say it's stable, but, you know, you may have this, you may have some flickering in the screen, you may say a few curse words at your monitor. You know, don't say it's stable if it's not truly stable. Just be honest, be up front. As a Windows dual booter, that's what I would appreciate more. And honestly, that's the end of my rant. If you guys want to finish this up, you're more than welcome to. I just get it, had to get it off my chest because Spatry knows the story, and I was <laughs> steaming this past weekend. But I said what I had to say in the short video that I that I did the uploads. And it was really just, just a warning to potential Windows dual booters who want to try 11.10 with GNOME Shell with the updated drivers. Don't do it. And hopefully they can learn from my mistake. That's it. And it was That's also it was also your exercise for the week of self control in all things uh, related to <laughs> ranting and emotions and all of that sort of thing. Well, I I feel like you guys are my therapists, so thank you. How much do you charge <laughs> by the hour, or by the second here? But uh, <laughs> all right, let's finish. Uh, thank you for listening. By the way, I do appreciate it. Uh, if one last, uh, this is the last segment. There was a question posted on the uh, Total OS Today forum. I think, Twill, you may have an answer. A gentleman named Rob. Hi, Rob. What's up, if you're listening? Trouble mounting his Samsung Android to Banshee Media Player. What solutions, what possible solutions do we have? Well, uh, my experience with Android devices up until tonight has actually been, if I want to do something with it, I, I normally just personally avoid music players other than like VLC. So I will go into my Android device, create a music folder, and just throw my music into it, and the device itself recognizes that and makes it all playable. 
However, after doing a little bit of research, three minutes or so, I found a, an article, which I think Spatry can link to, which uh, is called Sync Music to Android Devices with Banshee. And basically what you do is you go into your device, into the root of the device, and create a text file called .is underscore audio underscore player, and put one line of text in it, audio underscore folders equals mp3, and th- stick that on the SD card of the device, and the next time you connect it to Banshee, it's opens up and it actually looks a lot like iTunes, you know, bad reference there, but it gives you the option to sync all of your music, your pictures, your, oh, what else does it give you? Audiobooks, videos, podcasts. Yeah. Very useful. Okay. Does anybody else have any tips? Yes, I have tried that solution and it does work. Wonderful. Rob, if you are listening, <laughs> there you go. And, and I think Spatry will have a reply on the forum, so you may want to check that out. Um, Spatry, did you want to add something else or ping or anybody? Actually, uh, what I, uh, w- what I usually do, uh, when I want to transfer music, uh, I basically, uh, just plug my Android device and it reads it as a folder and I just, uh, copy and, uh, paste my files, uh, over to my Android device that way. Or sometimes if I, if I'm feeling lazy, I'll just pull out the chip out of my device itself and just put it into an adapter and plug it into the computer and transfer files that way as well. So that's what uh, I do 99% of the time. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like that may be possibly the best solution for you, Rob. Um, gentlemen, time is up. Uh, what can I say? This has been fun, very informative. Thank you. And I must tell you, as a Windows dual booter, yes, it's fun to tinker around with Linux when it is stable. But the number one reason why I use Linux, it's because of people like you, it's brains like you, who help guys like me who are still learning. Thank you very much to all of you. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. Spatry, since you did the introduction, I guess I will do the outro. I would like to thank everybody who joined me on the show this evening. I hope maybe someone learned something I know I did. Thank you to Spatry, Ping, This Week in Linux, IG, you guys are the best. Thank you to all of you. Thank you to all of you. All the listeners out there, please check out all of the channels here. They're all very worth your time. That's it for me. And on behalf of the entire A-Team crew, I will catch you guys, all of you guys, sometime in the future. Thank you.